Hey guys, what is up? Today I'm going to cover everything you need to know about a Ready Brute Elite tow bar system and how to properly hook up a tow and tow it behind your RV. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. You know, a lot of you have been asking me for months, Martin, have you done an in-depth uh, video on your tow system? And I've referred to a couple others that I showed some of it. But today you're gonna get exactly what you asked for. We're gonna do an in-depth look at our entire tow system, the car, safety features, and all that. I've taken this uh, video and I've divided it up into six parts. Part one, why we chose the Ready Brute Elite tow bar. Number two, how the tow bar works. Number three, how to properly hook it up to a tow vehicle. Four, tow bar maintenance. Number five, the cost of towing four down. And number six, and probably one of the most important sections that I'll cover at the end, some serious safety things that you need to consider while you're towing behind your RV. So let's get started. Number one, why did I choose to buy the Ready Brute Elite tow bar? When I was getting ready about four years ago, uh, getting ready to go full time, one of the big things that I left till last was to set up our tow bar system and our car. And I had decided right off the bat that I was not going to use a tow dolly for many reasons. But I know many of you do, and if you do, that's fine with me. Uh, but I wanted to tow four down, and that's with all four wheels on the ground, not on a dolly. Now, when you're looking for tow bar options to tow four down, I mean, there are a lot of options out there. And it can be a little daunting to pick through the bones to get a little meat when you're researching all this stuff. It can get quite overwhelming. I ended up deciding on buying the Ready Brute Elite tow bar with a 10,000 pound capacity because if I ever upgrade to a different tow vehicle that's a lot heavier than the one we've got, but I'm still gonna be restricted uh, to the capacity of my hitch and my motorhome, which is 5,000 pounds. But for right now, this thing is totally way beefier than I need for our tow car, and I have the ability to upgrade later on. We currently have a 2017 Ford Fiesta. It has a manual five-speed transmission and fully loaded with our water softener, our gear, and full tank of gas and all that. It's right about 2,800 pounds. Now, one of the main reasons that I chose the Ready Brute Elite tow bar is it has a built-in braking system in it. It's called a Ready Brake. It's actually a surge tow braking system. It's fully mechanical. There's no hydraulics, no electrics, no airlines. I mean, it's, it's simply the easiest thing to hook up and it meets all the requirements in all the U.S. states and Canada. Number two, now I'm gonna show you how the Ready Brute Elite tow bar works. Inside the tow bar head itself, which is this here, this is the head, inside here is a supplemental braking system built right into the head. It's a surge brake, and you have this black cable right here that attaches to this black arm. On the other end of the cable, you have this piece here. This attaches to the front of the car on the base plate. From there on the car, the cable goes through the engine bay, through the firewall, and a cable wraps around the brake pedal. I'll show you that more later, but I wanted to point out this part right here. So when you put on the brakes to the RV, and this surge brake moves this way by, by momentum, so this brake inside the surge brake begins to apply. We'll push this lever forward, plus the cable moves forward and pulls the brake pedal in the car. Now there's many states that require that if you're towing a tow car behind an RV, it has to have its own braking system. Now the Ready Brute Elite not only meets that requirement, but it has actually two braking systems, as I just said. You have the surge brake here, where this will move and apply a brake inside, plus it is pulling the brake pedal inside the tow vehicle. So you, in essence, have two braking systems. I mean, it just doesn't get any easier than that. Now, in addition to the braking system, I also opted to have an emergency breakaway cable. It's this red one right here. 
The emergency breakaway cable also hooks onto the base plate on the front of the car. That cable continues like this black one did through the engine bay, through the firewall, and it also hooks on to uh, the brake pedal. So in the event, every safety feature failed, and now the car is free from the RV, the emergency brake cable is gonna pull and lock the brake pedal in the car so it can come to a complete stop on its own. Now, two words of caution here. A breakaway cable is needed in many states and in Canada. So if you set up your tow bar system and the emergency cable like I do, you're not going to have to worry. It's going to be safe and you're going to be totally legal, no matter where you go. Second, if you have a very hefty tow vehicle, I mean way heavier than ours, this breakaway cable where it hooks up into the back of the RV should really be hooked up to the frame of the RV and not the hitch. If you ever have a total hitch failure like this one here, having your emergency brake cable hooked to the hitch is not going to do you any good. Now I chose to rig up our system by using the emergency cable into the hitch in the designated holes where you put the safety chains or the safety cables in. You can see it right here. I have a separate uh, D-ring and I attach the end of the emergency breakaway cable to this in the designated holes where you put the safety chains or the cable. Now the reason I chose this method to put the emergency breakaway cable through the same hole where the, where the cables or the chains go is because our car, our tow vehicle is so darn light and I felt very comfortable that this hitch is, is quite capable of holding the little load that we're carrying. But in addition to that, I installed these anti-rattle -rat clamps right here. I have one here and I have one up here where it attaches into the hitch on the RV. Now before I installed these anti-rattle clamps, this whole entire area as I was driving and turning and stopping and all that this there was a lot of play in here and when that when all these parts are moving in about and that whole area is loose over time that can cause metal fatigue and in my opinion and with my background that's what can over time crack wells or break bolts and do those kind of things that would that would cause a hitch failure now would it hurt if i went ahead and made a longer cable designed the hardware drilled some holes and mounted the end to the frame instead of the hitch. Yeah, of course, I, I could do that. But again, I assessed my whole entire uh, tow system, the weight of my tow car, and how, how I just uh, got all this nice and firm, and I am totally confident. In my case, uh, putting the emergency breakaway cable is fine on the hitch. But again, I want to reemphasize this. If you have a heavy vehicle, way heavier than ours, I'd say 4,000, 4,500 pounds or more, I would definitely be putting the end of the emergency breakaway cable up to the frame on the uh, RV. That way, if you had a total failure, the hitch broke, chains didn't hold, everything is gone, and now that tow vehicle is on its own, that frame is going to hold and it's going to pull that emergency cable, it's going to lock up the brakes, and it's going to bring that vehicle to a, a halt on its own. One last word about the breakaway cable, and this is really important. Take a hard look and measure carefully how long this emergency cable needs to be in an all-out failure. Okay, so here is my over and under hitch right here. I bought this size of a hitch for two reasons. Number one, this upper hitch allows me to put in my bike rack that you can see here. And I also apply an anti-rattle clamp here also. So everything here, my bike rack, the, the Ready Brute Elite, everything has an anti-rattle clamp on here, which makes everything solid. The other part of the hitch is right here. It steps down. For our rig, this was important because I want the tow bar, the hitch, the car, and everything being totally level. Now, the rule is that this tow bar should not exceed three degrees, either up or down. That's the maximum that you can be out of alignment. 
And the reason for that is, is if you had it too high or too low and you slam on the brakes, you're running the risk for the tow bar to have a pole vault effect and come up and uh, you could have all kinds of bad things happen. So when I was doing all the measuring of where our car is and where the tow bar hooks to the car, the tow bar itself and the hitch, by doing the math, I determined that I needed this amount of drop right here to make everything nice and straight. But here's a rule of thumb, a common sense rule of thumb. When you're all hooked up with your RV and your tow car and you're looking at it and it's not straight, it's probably wrong. You need to adjust the type of drop or rise in your hitch to get that to where everything is nice and level. It just eliminates the possibility of any bad things happening. It's not that big a deal. It's a one-time thing you have to do. Now, when you buy a Ready Brood Elite tow bar, or any tow bar for that matter, you're more than likely going to get these kinds of pins. And they have a hole on the end, and you put in a cotter pin like that. These pins are used to connect the tow bar to the hitch, the hitch to the RV, and the tow bar to the car. I don't like these kind of pins. And I'll explain at the end when I cover uh, the serious safety issues you need to be considering while towing. I wanted locking pins, these kind of pins. It's a two-part pin, and it has a lock on the end. You put the lock on, you lock it, and now it's tamper-proof and it's strong. When I bought these pins, they came in packs of two. I needed five pins. One for the hitch, one for the tow bar, one for the bike rack, and two for the front of the car right here. So I ended up buying three packs of two. But I also didn't want to have all these different keys. So I had them all keyed the same, which I had to pay extra for. And then I had to wait for them to be keyed. Then they shipped them to me. So now I have one key that unlocks all the pins with locks. Now when I bought the Ready Brute Elite, and I dare say probably all tow bars, they come with those coiled safety cables. And after studying on the web and looking at some of the things that uh, go wrong with these cables, like this one right here, I didn't feel like those cables were safe enough for me. Now, I know a lot of cables that have gone through a real uh, jolt emergency situation and they have worked, but I just was not comfortable uh, using those coiled cables. Plus, the, when they're coiled, they stretch out, right? And it was very difficult to try to figure out the length of the emergency cable I needed by the time those cables were all stretched out. Well, with a history of working on rigging and stuff that I do, I'm like, you know what? I'm going with chain. I'm going to go with chain instead because I know chain, there's different tensile strengths of chain and they are much more reliable than cables. But I did like the hooks that they came with on the cable. So what I did is I took the hooks off of the existing safety cables that were shipped to me. And I like these clips because it has a safety clip right here. So when you hook it on something, you have this safety clip that ensures that this hook is not going to come out of its uh, location when you hook it on. I put these uh, chains on right like that. They go through the secondary loop right through here and from here they go to the base plate on the car. Not to worry, I'm going to show you how this all, I'm going to bring all this together in the end here so this all makes sense to you. Now I'd like to talk about chain and cables for just a minute because this is really important. Without getting into all the physics of metals and their strength and all of that, let me just say that I want to give you enough information so that you can make a, uh, an educated decision on the strength of chains or cable that you're going to need for your tow vehicle and know that you're going to be safe. Now, unless cables are rated for a what they call a drop test, they are usually done what they call a proof load. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's just say that this weighs 2,000 pounds, okay? And you have a cable that is hooked to this object and it's resting on the ground. As you pull up, it's a slow increased weight. It's rated to pull a load like this. And there is a criteria that needs to be met for that type of a load. Now another test, for example, let's say you have a safety vest, a harness and a lanyard where you're going to be raised to a high elevation and you need to have the safety harness on in the event that you fall off of that 
platform or whatever, and now you are dropping, that's going to be called a shock load or a drop test. That harness and that lanyard has to be heavy enough to get a sudden drop. So you have a slow criteria load that needs to be a certain strength, and then you have a drop strength. This drop test, this strength here needs to be a whole lot more than just dragging it up like that. Now, I don't know if these cables that come with these different assorted tow bars are drop tested or not. I don't think they are, but I could be wrong. But the point of what I'm trying to show you here and, and disequip you with the information is that if you decide to go with chains like I do, or you want to keep your cables, you need to make sure that your cable or chain is going to be able to take that shock for your tow vehicle, because this is going to vary from tow vehicle to tow vehicle, because if it comes off the back of the RV, that's exactly what's going to be happening. It's going to be tugging and jerking, and it's going to be a shock a drop test type of a, an event. So don't just go buy some certain different kind of chain. Now, what I did is I went to, to uh, tractor supply. Now, like I said, my, my tow car is extremely light. It's 2,800 pounds. But I went and got some chain that is very, way above what that car would ever need. And I had them cut it to length, two pieces. Remember I told you I got all the measurements. I put my car up there and I knew exactly how long my chains needed to be to account for a hitch failure or whatever. So I got my chains, I put on the uh, old hooks that came off the cables, and then I took some nylon material and I covered the, the chains completely and secured it with zip ties. No safety equipment should ever drag on the ground and it should be treated with some kind of an anti-corrosion chemical or something like that. It does may sound complicated, but it really isn't. If you just take your time, you measure everything correctly, look at the load of the car, determine the kind of shock that you're going to get from it. Because I mean, I've, you've seen them. I mean, I've seen some people pull some pretty heavy stuff behind these RVs and they would need a whole lot heavier cable or chains than I do for my little dinky Fiesta. So you have to take all these components together as an equation and then figure out what you need to stay safe. So on the main base plate on the car, you have the electrical connection and there's this cord right here. And this cord right here plugs right into the main uh, receiver. And I actually have zip tied that in so there'd be no way that this could come out. So this plugs into the RV, this plugs into the front of the, of the car, and this is what controls the lights and the blinkers and all that in the car as we're driving down the road. Now on the Ready Brute Elite, you can see this wiring right here. And this wiring has a sensor down inside here that when the surge brake activates, it sends a signal. And I wanna show you what I did with this wiring harness underneath the RV. So here we have that cable that I was showing you that came out the back of the uh, Ready Brute Elite surge brake. And it comes around over here. And the first thing I did is I put a ground wire right here uh, up against the frame. I took this lead, the positive lead, and I ran it into the split loom main chassis harness right here and tied it into the brake line. Then I installed a small light on the dashboard that you can see here and then took the two wires on the back of the light and tied them into the braking wires under the dash. And the reason I did that was is that when I'm driving down the road while towing, and I hit the brakes in the RV and that light comes on that confirms to me that the Ready Brute Elite brakes are working. Everything is working properly. Uh, it's an extra little step to do, but man, I'll tell you, having that indicator light there gives me a lot of peace of mind that everything back there is working good. Okay, so here we are at the car. First thing I want to cover with you is our tow bag. We keep this in the back seat of the car at all times. So whenever we're unhooking or hooking up, the first thing we do is we grab our bag. And in the bag, we carry two sets of gloves, one for Joni, one for me. The first thing we do is we take these main uh, connecting pins here and they go in just like this. We're gonna pull off this uh, little cap that we keep in there to keep water and stuff out. And they go in like this and you push them and you're spring-loaded. You see that, how this pin is? It's spring-loaded and you twist it 
and it snaps into place. This is part of the base plate right here. Remove this cap and put it in. The other thing I keep in here is some extra uh, ties, a pair of uh, diagonal wire cutters, some lube, and our locking pins and key. Everything is in the bag at all times. Now, as I showed you right here, on the end of our tow bar, we have these blue ox clevises. Go right on the end of these main attachment pins and you put the locking pin in between there and put on the lock. Now, when we bought this Ford Fiesta, we had to find out who makes our base plate for this car. And in our case, Blue Ox was the only company that made the base plate for our car. When you buy a Ready Brute Elite tow bar, all you have to do is specify what kind of base plate you have on your tow vehicle and they will send you the correct clevises that you need to have on the end of your tow bar. Now I'm going to be honest with you, to install a base plate uh, is quite a job. And every car or tow vehicle that you have is going to be a little bit different. All of these things, the pins, the chains, the electrical harness, the emergency breakaway cable, all this stuff is mounted on the base plate, which literally wraps around the side of the frame of the car and is all bolted in there with big solid bolts and locked tight. Now I want to cover one little more extra point on the emergency uh, breakaway cable that you can see right here. Remember the uh, red cable that I showed you where I hook it onto the hitch in my particular case? Well, that red cable comes and it connects right here. So as a precaution, as a safety precaution, I zip tie this red, uh, this red cable right here. Now in the event of an emergency and this car gets, uh, we get that shock treatment where that car is pulled by the cable, that little zip tie is just going to break right off of there and it will activate the cable. So this is kind of a, a little safety feature here to keep little menacing hands from jacking with me. I always glance down and I always make sure that that zip tie is still there. That way I know it hasn't been tampered with. Hooking up a Ready Brute Elite to this car is extremely easy. And it can be done by one person. I have done that by myself. It's not a big deal. But, you know, Joni and I are a team, right? We do everything together, including hooking up. She kneels on one side, I kneel on the other. We have our black bag there, and we uh, hook up the car together. And the reason for that is it's always best to have a second pair of eyes, another pair of hands, and we don't want to be making any mistakes. So we kind of look out for each other and check each other's work. And everything that we've talked about this far is all going to bring this all together. So take a look. Okay, so the first thing I do, I remove the cover. I put the straps in the cover, and this will go back into the car. To make aligning the front of the car easier to center it with the tow bar, I take it now and I raise this up and I put it right here in the center. This gives me a better visual to line the center of the car up. And once I pull the car up and I'm in place, I pull up the emergency brake and turn off the engine. Johnny's going to go get the bag of uh, our tools and our gloves and stuff. We keep it in the back of the car on the floor and she always keeps it on her side. The first thing we do is we put on our gloves. The next thing we do is we pull this down and we unwrap all of the cables and the chains and then we pick this back up. The next thing we do is we put our attachment pins onto the car. So we remove our plastic plugs right here and there are two of these. One goes there and one goes there. This is what attaches the tow bar to the car. The next thing we do is we get two pins ready, one for her and one for me. And she just puts them right out here on the ground. And I raise this up and I remove this clevis right here. You see that clevis? I remove that clevis. We drop this down. We pull these out, these locking levers. That allows us to extend these. And we open this up put the clevis onto the pin and we put the pins from the inside out. That way it's easier to put the locks on. It's also easier to remove them in the event of an emergency. The next thing we do is we hook up the chains. You use them in a cross pattern. 
So the one from over here goes over there, and the one from over here goes over to here. And we usually will put one twist in the chain. Then we take the electrical cable and we plug that in. This is tying the lights and everything to the motorhome. The Ready Brute Elite brake is operated by this cable right here. So we attach it to this ring right there. We run it through here. We take off the clevis, put that through there, put the pin through there, and a cotter pin through there. You see that? The last thing we do is we take the emergency brake cable. So I run that through here, and I usually will wrap it around one of the chains to keep the slack out. Been doing it like this for many years now, it works great. The last thing we do is we take these now and we put them in the horizontal position with these arms. And then what I do is I get into the car and I back it up and take the slack out of the tow bar and have these lock into place. So the last thing we do before we do a light check, I make sure that the car is in neutral and I take off the emergency brake. And this is something that Joni always double checks me on. In neutral, emergency brake off. So after we've hooked up the toad, I go into the motorhome, I start it up and I give her first a brake check. She's checking the lights. And now the left signal and now the right signal and we're good to go. You know, without filming, it actually takes Joni and I about three minutes to hook up the car. I mean, it is so extremely easy to do. And again, that's why I chose this particular system. This is a repetitious task that we do all the time. And man, this thing is just a snap to hook up and disconnect. Okay, the fourth segment we're gonna cover real briefly is the maintenance on this tow bar. There's not much, it's a very minimal amount of maintenance, but I'll show you the first thing I do is over here on the end of the tow bar. You can see right here, you see these Zert fittings right here? There's one here and one here on the other side. As you know, I grease my chassis, and when I complete the greasing of the chassis, I come back here and I grease each one of those Zert fittings. These rubber boots right here, you see how they're held on with zip ties? I take these zip ties and I cut them off and I'll pull this sleeve all the way down and that exposes the mechanism inside each one of these arms. I take my grease gun and I'll pump some grease inside this mechanism with a sleeve and then I just kind of wipe it in there with my hands, bring the sleeve back up and put a new zip tie on it. I use this lubricant, it's the same lubricant that I use on my power gear uh, slide systems. All the rack and pinion and the motor gear, the main drive gear and all that, this is what I use. But I use this same uh, lubricant on this area here. So I squirt some down in here and in through here, both top and bottom. That makes this whole system work and keep very lubricated. It doesn't stick, it doesn't get hard. It's very easy to move around and spread open to hook to the car. Now using this lube doing that on these two places, I usually will do that twice a year. Remember these uh, main attachment pins that went into the base plate? I take some uh, 120 sandpaper and I clean the ends of these. And I also go inside the holes uh, in the base plate and I clean those out. Then I use the same uh, lubricant and I'll spray these and inside those holes and then wipe them nice and clean. These pins that I attach the car to right here in these clevises, okay? I don't do this to these other pins. These pins are never removed, but I do remove the rubber caps and I put uh, lithium grease inside the keyhole just to keep those from ever seizing up and getting corroded. But on these two pins, I'll also do this once a year. I'll take that same 120 uh, sandpaper, I get that all nice and shiny. I spray it with the lube, wipe it off, I'm good to go. And with the lock, I squirt a little bit of lithium grease in there and also in here, I put the key in and I move it back and forth and make sure that that's all working nice and easy. Okay, number five, what did it cost me to set up this entire system? Well, for me, it was about $3,000 but I bought everything new. Now you can find uh, used Ready Brute Elites from time to time. 
uh, on places like Craigslist or something like that, but and probably get a little bit of discount. But let me give you a quick breakdown on that $3,000. First, I had to purchase the base plate and the inst installation. That was about 850 bucks. Then I had the tow bar itself. It was about 1150. Then there was the over and under hitch. I had to buy the three rattle clamps. This one, this one, and the one that I put on my bike rack. Then I had to buy the bike rack and the bike cover. I had to buy the six locking pins and have them all keyed to the same key. I had to buy the bag, my tool bag, my gloves, all that kind of stuff. So that was a little extra cost. And when you add it all up together with tax and everything, it was right around $3,000. But I'll tell you, in my mind, this has been money that was well spent. Number six, and the final segment is some serious safety tips. Now, many states have a 65 mile an hour speed limit when you're towing. For me, it's not an issue because I'm always driving about 63 to 65 miles an hour anyway, so I don't even worry about it. But I just thought I'd bring that up to your attention. Regularly check your tow equipment all the time. That means getting up underneath the RV and looking at all your welds, your hitch, your bolts, tow bar system itself, your pins, everything that is in the front of your tow. Just make sure that everything is good and no one has tampered with anything. I, I, keep my, I keep a close eye on it. I really do. And here's another biggie. Always check your tow car and your tow equipment if you've ever stopped anywhere, like a rest stop. And your tow car and tow gear has been sitting back there unattended with all kinds of people around it. Before you leave, you need to go back and make sure that nobody has tampered with anything. And that's exactly why I don't use these kinds of pins. For somebody to get cute and come and pull out this Carter pin and leave this pin in, and then off you go down the highway, and within no time flat, this thing could wiggle out and real bad things are gonna happen. That's why I use locking pins. It really depends on the amount of risk you wanna take. If you wanna take the risk of this kind of pin, and somebody tampering and pulling that pin out, that cutter pin out, then like me, you want to go to a locking pin. But just understand a locking pin in an emergency might cause its own issues too. And don't forget to check that breakaway cable. Remember where I had that little zip tie around there? Make sure your breakaway cable hasn't been tampered with either. Now, like I told you, I bought this Ready Brute Elite uh, about four years ago, maybe a little bit longer, but it has since been replaced by a second generation uh, Ready Brute Elite 2. Okay, that's what it's called. They've made a couple of design improvements, but the way it works, everything that I've showed you here, the surge brake, the emergency breakaway cable, everything that I've covered here is all exactly the same. Everything you've seen here is in our Amazon store. The link to our store is down there in the description text. Everything we use and everything you need is in our Amazon store. So the next time you need something for your RV, if you use our link and take you to our store, even if it's not in our store, you can go to our store, shop on Amazon like you normally would. Put the stuff in the cart and check out. It's a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joni, for taking the time to making these videos and helping the RV community. Also, don't forget, if you'll go to my main YouTube channel page, and on that main page, you'll see playlist tab right here. You see that? If you'll click playlist, that's gonna take you to my playlist page. And I have got a whole library of other videos there that cover a multitude of subjects that shows you how to take care of your RV the right way. I show you how to do it and you'll know it's being done right and you'll save a boatload of money. I hope that this classroom segment featuring an in-depth look at the Ready Brute Elite tow bar system and how to safely tow with your RV has been helpful. I know this video has been a bit long, but man, it's been great being here with you. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around. <laughs>